Hi and welcome, this is JNM with a new Blender tutorial and in this one I will give you some tips about low poly design. Here's my Blender project with some low poly models and you can also see this here in the wireframe mode. But we are going to create a new low poly model, a chair and I will switch to a separate layer. And then I will show you the wrong way first because I saw it many times that it is done like that. A cube is created, fine, then it is scaled then switch to edit mode and then subdivide and subdivide one more time and then select these faces here at the bottom and extrude them out. Okay, and this is where we stop because what you get here is not a low poly model. There are so many faces and polygons wasted. That's not the way we want to do this. So let's delete this one and start again. Add a new cube like before, scale it and then you should apply the scale every time you scale in object mode, that's important. Press Ctrl A and apply the scale. And now I switch to edit mode and add a second cube. I press C and choose wireframe, then Shift A and add the cube. Then I scale this down. Oops, I have snapping enabled, let me disable this, okay. Then scale the whole thing then in set direction and this will be the lag. We have four faces for this but actually we can remove the one that will be invisible. Then I'll set the snapping to vertex snapping. After that I press L to select the lag and then I'll snap it here to this vertex. Okay, now I duplicate this lag Press Shift D to duplicate it and snap it to this left edge. And again. And the last one. Okay, nice. Now we have the base model of the chair with four legs. And the next thing that I want to add is the backrest. So I will select one leg and duplicate it. Again, I press L to select it, then Shift D and move it upwards. Okay, now I rotate it 180 degrees around the X axis and then I snap it to this vertex here. Okay, then I select this face, move it a bit upwards, not too much. Then again, select this with the L key, Shift D to duplicate and snap it to the left vertex. And in the end we need two parts in the middle, so I will duplicate this one here, Shift D and then rotate it 90 degrees around the Y axis and then again 90 degrees around the Z axis. Okay, then I'll scale it down and to save polygons I will again remove this one face here that won't be visible. Alright, now we have to snap this to the outer parts and I think a good way to do this is to switch to edge selection mode, press B to select these edges and snap it to this vertex and the same thing I do for the left part. Then I press L to select it and bring it upwards. Okay, and I think I will scale this along the X axis slightly like that. Okay, then I will duplicate this and bring it down. Yeah, this looks nice. The basic chair model is created. And now I'm going to add a kind of fabric to the seat just to have two materials, the wood and the fabric. And to keep it simple, I will add an edge loop here and then extrude out this part. But you could do this in a more optimized way. This is just for demonstration. Okay, fine. Now first, I will show you again the wrong way, okay? I will add materials to this model. First the wood material and then I will add a second material for the fabric. So let's select this in object mode, switch to the material tab and press new. 
and create a material for the chair. I will choose a brown tone for this. Then I select the material viewport shading so that we can see this material. And after that I will add the material for the fabric. I select the red color for this new material and I will assign this one after I selected these parts here in edit mode and then press assign. Well this works but why is this in my opinion the wrong way? Why do you create low poly models? Well in the most cases you will use them in your games, okay, in your mobile games for example and you want to reduce the number of draw calls. So I prefer to use as few materials as possible so let me remove this second one and go for using one material, okay? So how can this be done? I will open a node editor window for this material, for this one material that we are going to use and here's the diffuse shader. Now I'm adding an image texture node And for this one I will use a predefined texture that I use for my low poly models. Then I connect it to the diffuse shader. Then I switch to edit mode, select all the faces and press U and reset. Okay, now the image is used for the faces and <laughs> yeah, looks a bit strange, right? Okay, so I open a UV image editor window and let's have a look at this image. And after opening the UV image editor, we see the unwrapped faces. All of them have the same UV island size. And then I press S and scale them down to a really small size. And this is the image. I have drawn color squares into this image with a size of 16 pixels. And I'll put the UV islands all together on a color square by pressing the G key. And as you can see, the chair gets a brown color because I moved the UV islands over a brown color square. Then I select these faces here and in the UV image editor the corresponding UV islands get selected. I press G and move them over this red color square. And that's it. That's my texturing process for low poly models. You just need one material and an image like that with color squares. Now you can export your model and use it in the game engine of your choice like Unity or Unreal Engine. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching, thanks for your support and see you soon on JNM.